my name is Jill Berry Bowen, CEO of Northwestern Medical Center and your host of the NMC Health Beat Show, dedicated to discussing hot healthcare topics. Today I'll be talking to Wendy Lawrence. She's a physical therapist in NMC's Rehabilitation Services Department, who is specially trained in lymphedema management, oncology rehabilitation. We'll be talking about physical therapy in cancer recovery. So Wendy, thank you so much uh, for being here today. My pleasure, Joe. You know, I don't know a whole lot about this. So, uh, <laughs> so can you uh, talk a little bit about what is oncology rehab? So oncology rehab is an exercise program for someone that survived cancer. Um, people have oftentimes gone through close to a year of surgery and chemotherapy and radiation and they're done treatment. Um, they've graduated from you know the medical mm. um, treatment and they expect to feel better. Yeah. Um, they expect to get on with their lives and they, they wonder why, you know, why am I feeling so weak? Why am I feeling so tired? Um, why can't I get back into the things that I would like to be able to do? And in reality, all of those treatments which are necessary for treatment of the cancer really, um, the, the inactivity of, of just you know going through all of that treatment and then the treatments themselves can have side effects that cause a lot of weakness a lot of fatigue and are limiting people being able to get back to the things that they love to do wow. so how can that so how can this um, therapy help someone well um, exercise is a powerful tool um, and there are many things that it can help with it can help um, in general just with somebody's um, general sense of well-being mm -hmm. and helping with their energy levels it can help um, promote healthy self-care choices um, it can decrease some of the weight gain that people may have experienced um, with their treatment um, it can build muscle, it can lower body fat, um, and it can actually, the weight bearing types of exercise can help to improve bone density, which may have been affected by some of mm -hmm. the treatment that people have gone through. So there's many positive effects yeah. of entering into an exercise program. On a cellular level, um, exercise can help decrease le um, levels of cellular inflammation, um, lower stress hormones, regulate some of the sex hormones, um, testosterone or estrogen that may um, have affected you developing the cancer that you had, mm -hmm. but may be being targeted um, in terms of some of the treatments. So for instance, a woman who's on tamoxifen, um, they're blocking estrogen, which was fueling mm -hmm. um, their, their breast cancer. Um, it also provides a boost to the immune system um, and there are some studies that say that exercise helps to decrease the chance of um, cancer recurrence. Really? So that's a really exciting um, topic to, that there'll be more information on or more research um, on in the future. So many, many positive effects to, to exercise. In terms of cancer-related fatigue, they found that um, in some studies that exercising um, participants, um, their fatigue was 40 to 50% less than non-exercising participants. That's a huge wow. number. Um, it really is a number that makes me you know, look and say, okay, you know, those are pretty good odds that um, the exercise is gonna make me feel better. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's not like it's two to three percent and you're like, well, maybe, maybe not. Um, those are pretty eye-opening numbers for me anyway. Sure, that is, that is really amazing. And this provides such a great opportunity for folks to almost like get their life back. And mm -hmm. so are there other outcomes that, um, that, that happen when someone goes through this type of rehab? Well, the other thing that I've really noticed is that it's helpful to be together with people who have gone through the same experience. And so exercising in a group, you know, you're on the treadmill or you're on the rowing machine, but you're also talking to that person next to you. And I, I find that that support 
um, has been really nice for people who have gone through this experience and sometimes you feel pretty isolated you know as you're going through it um, because not everybody around you really knows what you're going through so it's helpful right. to be exercising with people who really do know what you're going through and can offer support in a much different way than people who haven't gone through the cancer experience. So this really helps you emotionally um, uh, get adjusted um, to your diagnosis. Are there other things going on inside the body that is also evolving and changing um, with this um, rehab? Well, like I said, you know, it, it's helping us to um, get our weight back down to mm -hmm. healthy levels. It's helping to build lean body mass. It's helping to build bone density. Um, it's helping to maybe control some of those um, sex hormones that um, particularly testosterone or estrogen that perhaps were fueling um, our, our cancer in the first place. Um, you know, and then just that whole mind lifting our mood and improving our yeah. sense of well-being. Yeah. So when I start, how long does this rehab uh, take? And then what can I expect to be going through? Well, what you can expect when um, you have a referral for oncology rehab, or if you read it about it in the newspaper <laughs> and you want to pursue getting a uh, referral for oncology rehab, is that I do ask for clearance either through your primary care doctor or your oncologist um, that you're ready to participate mm -hmm. um, um, in oncology rehab. And then what you could expect once you get that referral is I do a physical therapy evaluation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I look at your strength and your range of motion. We look at your fatigue levels. Um, we evaluate your sensation. Um, sometimes people who have had chemotherapy have some numbness in their hands or, or feet mm -hmm. um, called neuropathy. Um, we look at your balance. Um, we look at your endurance. We do something called a six minute walk test, which just is one way to measure um, your endurance. And we just see how far you can walk in six minutes. We monitor your blood pressure and your heart rate and your oxygen level. Also shortness of breath, fatigue. Um, and so we do some measures of, okay, where are you starting off? Are you ready to exercise in a group setting or do you need some individual therapy first? Is your balance really impaired or you're so weak that you're not really able to exercise in a group setting, but maybe you need some one-on-one -on -one PT for a few weeks and then you can transition into um, the group setting. So we do that evaluation, and then if you're ready for the group setting, um, <laughs> it meets twice a week um, here at NMC. It meets in the cardiac rehab um, space at Cobblestone Building, and it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 12.30, and we start off with some warm-up exercises, some stretches, some a little bit of strengthening. Um, work into some cardiovascular training, mm -hmm. um, treadmill, we have treadmills, rowers, bikes, um, <laughs> so there's a number of different ways to do that. Um, sometimes I have people working on balance exercises if they need that. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes I have people working with some light free weights to help to build up muscle strength again. Um, and then we all finish by doing some cool down stretches. Mm -hmm. I also have speakers who come in um, occasionally, and I've had people come in and talk about stress management or um, yoga, um, tai chi, so some different topics Wonderful. that just show people that there are, are different ways also to work on fitness than just kind of your typical gym setting. Um, many people are very intimidated by going into a gym, um, mm -hmm. so it's nice that it's small, um, they're all cancer survivors, so they yeah. all um, can be very supportive of each other. Definitely, definitely. And then it's free for the first eight weeks, um, two times a week, and then after that, um, people are able to continue, but um, there is a small fee associ associated with that, um, and they can continue as long as they want to. Um, so it's a maintenance type of mm -hmm. exercise program. Or sometimes people decide that they're going to transition to a gym at that point or continue exercising at home. Um, different people um, yeah, do gonna, different things. I was going to ask, what, what do you um, have folks do or what do you recommend they do after they complete the program? So it's kind of 
what happens after this? It sounds like people may go to a gym, but how do, how do they keep things going and what do you recommend? Well, um, again, just like all of us, you know, <laughs> there are different ways or different things that kind of really make us happy when we're exercising. Um, so some people are happy to um, continue doing a walking program at home. Some people want to swim. Some people want to go to the gym. Some people really like coming into the group and, and continue to come into the group. So that support. I mean, th yeah, I, I there's so many different um, ways to exercise, but the important thing is that they're doing some type of exercise. Okay exercise. It's good for everything, isn't it? It is. It <laughs> is. As much as we hate to admit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So could you um, talk a little bit about lymphedema and, you know, who has that? I mean, what is it and, and how, do you, how do you work with it? Okay. So lymphedema is a type of swelling that um, can, or, can occur in cancer patients and also um, in non-cancer patients. Uh, I'll focus on lymphedema in the cancer patient. Sure. Is often related to um, either the surgery itself um, to remove um, their cancer, um, and often because they've removed lymph nodes um, to help stage their, the person's cancer. And so for a breast cancer, for instance, they remove some axillary lymph nodes, so lymph nodes in the armpit, um, to see if the cancer has spread and to determine what um, treatment is needed. And so our lymphatic system helps our circulatory system in controlling fluid levels in our body. And so if you take out part of that system, mm -hmm. Um, I tell people it's kind of like driving on that four lane highway and then you run into construction and it goes down to two lanes. Um, the traffic is still getting through mm -hmm. most of the time, but um, it's not getting through as efficiently. And mm -hmm. so um, you get that backup. And um, in the case of lymphedema, um, you experience swelling because the circulatory system is not able to keep up with the fluid demand of okay. the body. Um, so another example would be in the leg. Um, let's say somebody had a melanoma or a skin cancer um, in their leg and they took out lymph nodes in the groin to see if that cancer had spread. So sometimes people can get swelling in their leg. Okay. The difference between lymphedema and plain swelling that we might see after a surgery or if we sprained our ankle or something like that is that there's a higher protein content to that swelling. Um, and not to get too complicated, but <laughs> proteins really like water, and so they kind of draw water mm -hmm. um, to themselves and hold water. Um, and so physical therapy can offer treatment in that regard, uh, physical or occupational therapy, and mm -hmm. some nurses as well are trained in a technique called manual lymph drainage. And it's a specialized massage technique that helps to um, drain the swelling, reroute the swelling around areas that maybe aren't um, efficiently managing that swelling. So if somebody's right arm is swollen here and normally um, the fluids would be going through these lymph nodes, but some of these lymph nodes have been removed and they're having a collection of swelling, sometimes we can reroute it over to the other Amazing. Um, lymph nodes, or sometimes we can even reroute it down to um, the groin um, lymph nodes wow. so that um, we can get rid of that swelling. And then we do some compression bandaging to keep that swelling down. And we often see people um, once a day or you know, sometimes every other day where we do the massage, we wrap um, with these compression bandages to keep it down, then we take the bandages off, we do the massage again, we wrap again, and we try to get the arm or the leg down to as small as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that point, fit somebody with a compression stocking or sleeve mm -hmm. to keep it down. Um, not everybody needs that compression mm -hmm. stocking or sleeve, but um, many people do um, wow. to keep it down. We also teach them about um, good skin care, um, exercise, um, and some of those things that help to 
um, manage the swelling as well. Here's that exercise again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to do it. <laughs> and the interesting thing with lymphedema and exercise is they traditionally said, um, oh, don't exercise because you might increase the swelling, you know, don't do anything. And they actually have done some really good studies that show wow. that people who are exercising actually you know, in moderation, not overdoing it and getting yourself all inflamed and, and sore, but actually have better management of their wow. lymphedema than people who are not exercising. So it's wow. not a contraindication to exercise. Great. Well, Wendy, this has been most informative about oncology rehab and lymphedema and how you treat it. and we've all learned that exercise is the answer to everything. <laughs> so thank you so much for being a wonderful guest today. This is uh, Jill Bray Bowen, your host of NMC's Health Beat Show. Thank you for joining us today.